Hey, what's up? It's Christopher, aka The Bronze Age Nerd, and welcome back to The Bronze Cave. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you bought one of those books that was on the top 10 list and if your FOMO would pay off? Well, then this is the show for you. Now, every two weeks, I make a video called Top 5 Not to Buy, and in those videos, I grab five books from those top lists, and those are the books that I wouldn't invest in at that current point in time. Now, to keep myself fair, what I've decided to do is make follow-up videos where I track the prices of those books as they move forward in time. So I'm still getting caught up on all those old videos I made. So this video aired on November 15th, 2021. And so we'll be looking at three months later from that time period and see how those books performed. Okay, so the first book we're gonna look at on this list was Deadpool Black, White & Blood, number four. This was the Panosian variant, which is a one in 25 ratio. Uh, this is the first appearance of Sakura Spider in a US comic. Now, I have a feeling this book is one of the ones that I didn't do too well on. Let's find out. Uh, we are gonna look at uh, um, sales data from cover price, which is the, the price guy that you guys voted on. And we're also gonna look at eBay sold listings. We have no graded sales for this comic book on cover price, so let's look at raw. Okay, so I made the video on November 15th. So I said, hey, don't buy this book on November 15th. And if that's true, if you listen to that advice, the next sale after that was 153.50, 97, 99.99, 97.99, 112, 118. So if in the next few days after that video, if you bought it, it's selling for less than you would have bought it. So technically, you would have lost a little bit of money on this book if you held on to it for three months and then tried to, you know, sell it now. However, if you sold it like at the end of November, maybe you would have made a little bit of money on it. So I think maybe kind of flat, maybe up a little bit. However, I do think this book is is still performing a lot better than I expected. So it's one to watch. Let's go look over eBay. Okay, on eBay, we go back to January 9th. That's the, the farthest it's gonna go back on these sales. And we see that one sold for $94, $100, and then with a whole bunch of best offer accepted. I'm not gonna dive into each one of those. I could, but it would take a long time. I'm trying to tighten up these videos a little bit. Um, you guys are more than welcome to do that yourself. But even if it sold for a dollar less than these high bid numbers, it gives us a, a pretty good indicator for where it was selling, 75. So I, I think it's going down. Uh, it's trending down. I think this is an interesting book. Um, if you believed in this book at the time, maybe it's a good time to pick it up. If you believe in that character, I, maybe that's kind of the way I would look at it, but it's still down from when I said you should buy it. We haven't seen the graded copies come back yet, or at least they're not on the market, it seems like. That could be pretty interesting. But still, I'm sticking by this one. It was probably not a great investment, although now it's kind of turning into one, possibly, if you have any faith in this character. Okay, next up on the list was Eternals number seven, the one in 50 Peach Momoko variant. And this is another version kind of... Uh, 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 ratio incentive cover that I didn't really like the looks of at the time. Let's go look at the raw sales on cover price. So we see a whole bunch of sales that month that it came out. And again, we're looking for the 15th, anything after the 15th. So $45, that's actually less than ratio, $80 and $53.46. We do see a high sale of $99.99 in January, down in February, although that says it's a 9.0 copy. That's really low grade for, for a book like this. And then $85 in March. Interesting. Let's look at eBay. Because again, we don't have any graded sales on cover price. Okay, on eBay, we go back to January 15th again and we see it selling for $99.99. And we were trying to get up through February, $43 from United Kingdom. There's only two other sales, 85 and 75. So this one seems pretty flat too, uh, for the most part. So in my opinion, if you're spending the kind of money that you would have been spending for a one in 50 that's on a hot 10 list, and this is the only performance you're seeing out of it, that's that's pretty bad. If you send it off to get graded because you got a 9.8, maybe you'll see that return in investment. I just don't see this book as, as still being something. That, I mean, there's not a lot of sales. People aren't really hopping on it. Uh, maybe it's a bit of a ghost, but more likely than not, it's just not a book that performed that well. And therefore, it wasn't a good book to buy three months ago. Okay, I'm super interested in this one. I love this cover. This is an Arthur Adams cover for Strange Academy 13, highlighting magic. That has almost nothing to do with why this, this comic book heated up, though. Although people still love this cover. It's that, uh, uh, for probably a couple of obvious reasons, this was the first cameo appearance of Gas Lamp. It's a one-page reveal. Uh, he's named and has dialogue that's according to cover price. This book, we do actually have some graded information. Let's take a look at the raw sales data. Jumping into November 15th. Oh, we see a ton of sales data on this, by the way. So jumping into like November 15th, it was selling for around $25. That's pretty hefty for a, for a regular cover price book. Um, and then we see it jump... Let's see, I see 30, a few 30s, but also some 17, 20, 34. It's 3470, uh, 33. I don't think I'm missing any super high sales in there. And then in December, comes back down. Anywhere from what, 1264, 399, one sold at cover price. That's kind of an outlier though, I think. Uh, $19, 1952. So it's coming down. Then this is interesting. It 
kind of goes back up in January a little bit. Uh, you still see that that $20, then you get 25, 25, 25, 30. So this has had kind of an interesting life lifespan where it's basically, you know, went up to that crazy good price for a brand new uh, $3.99 cover and then dipped down like a third and it's come back up. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, if we look forward in time here, that's kind of where it stayed. So that's interesting. Let's go look at the graded. So with the graded, we only have two sales, one's in December and one's kind of outside of our time frame in February. 130 for a for a 98 graded modern. Um, that's pretty decent, uh, especially if you bought it for cover price back then. But then we jump forward three months later from that, and we're cheating a little bit, and it's only $10 more, $140. That's interesting. Okay, eBay takes us all the way back to January 4th, where you see it selling for $15. A 9.6 sold for $45. That's interesting data. Here we have a 9.8 that sold for $97. 9.6, $70. 98125. Interesting. Let's go look at the first page or the newer page of results. And again, we're trying to get up through February. So we see a lot of the raw sales look to be in line. There's that 139.99. And there's a couple keys so that kind of throws it off a little bit. Yeah, another 96 for 57. That's interesting for a 96. I would expect it to be a little bit more for this cover. So yeah, again, this book was flat. So I don't think it was necessarily a good buy, but it certainly has held its value, which is interesting. It makes me wonder if over time, as more collectors want to hold on to this book because they they paid a decent amount of money for it, you might see less copies available on the market, which could actually help the price go up. Uh, still, it, it didn't go up. Okay, Eternals number 11, the regular edition. Where are we at? So just had to double check. This is interesting. Uh, so cover price calls us the first appearance of Agonar, but Key Collector calls us the first appearance of Druig and the first appearance of Kingo. That's interesting. I, I, I haven't personally read this issue. Uh, I was just going with the fact that at the time, the spec was Kingo because people thought he was really awesome. Kamal Nanjiani did a great job in the Eternals. That's kind of why this book flashed. Just interesting to point out that, that discrepancy. Okay, we're going to look at the raw sales data. And let's see. So sales, the first sales that would have been after my video aired are for $15.50 to $26 for a supposed 9.4. And then we see $30 in December. Fast forward to January, uh, the highest sale in January was $23. And again, grade could really vary on books from this vintage. So we don't really know what the grades are, uh, but we do get to February and $21 for a 4.5 and $39 for a 7.5. Gives us a pretty good idea. Uh, I don't think this book was uh, was on fire. So this one, let's look for graded here. Four and nine, eight, do we have good sales data? We have not really, looks like the sales were back in November. Uh, 260 and 324 and 98. At a 9.6, we could kind of use this data maybe. Nope, it actually was before I made my video as well. Okay, so it looks like a 9.4 is really what gives us the best data for comparison here. It's maybe not the, the grade I would select, but I mean, I need something from before or right around the time I made that video to kind of closer to now. And this, this is the grade that gives us that. Um, and then, I mean, it's a slightly older book, so that sort of makes sense. So we're looking at um, October, we were seeing 76.07 for a 9.4. It got up to like 120, but then in January, it sold for 52.55 down. EB, let's just go back to January 7th. This is the first time we see this book on a solo sale. Somebody bought it for 10 bucks. Uh, there's some definitely some lot sales. Somebody got a 9.0 for 55. $32 for, must, must be a high grade. That's pretty cool. 20, let's kind of just move forward through time here. There's a lot of, lot of sales. That's good. Uh, 9 4 for $52, 15 15 CBCS 5 0 for $33.99. That's interesting. There's a 9 4 for 56 I'd way rather have the 9 6 for 20 bucks more. Um, or sorry, 9 4, I mean. 5 So we're, we're here at about to where I need to cut off. And I mean, people are buying a raw copy for $5. So I, I don't think this book did anything like what it was supposed to do. Once again, it wasn't the right time to buy the book. Okay, this one is still interesting because there are there is still some speculation around this character, uh, Azari T'Challa, who you know people people speculate could take over for Black Panther. That's kind of a lot of people are trying to figure out who's going to take over for Black Panther, right? This is Avengers One from 2010, the Heroic Age relaunch. A little thing happened since this book, which really makes me wonder how the value would do on this, and that's Tosin. People now kind of feel like Tosin might be the next successor. So this is uh, extraordinarily interesting stuff. If we go back to the day I made the video. Before that, you see sales, you know, $8 to $25 in early November. But if I go to when I made the video, we're looking at $6. It gets up to uh, $23, $30. Is that the highest? 
I see a $36 sale. In December, the highest sale I see is $20. And then in January, the highest sale I see is $25. But it's, it's definitely on the high end there. And then in February, I mean, you can get this book back down for basically six bucks again. Doesn't look great. Let's look at graded. Okay, on a book from 2010, we're definitely looking at nine eights. Unfortunately, we don't get a ton of data here. We do have in November, like right before I made the video, 144.95, and then 141.50 in December, and then 73 bucks in January. Ouch. Let's check out eBay. Now, I will say there's a lot of listings here. I'm kind of just going to scroll through it. Um, I looked at this when I opened up the page uh, to get to the end of the list. And, you know, there's there's a 9.8 selling for $73 in January, $6.50, $12.99. Let's look at the next page. Yeah, 12 bucks, less than 20 bucks. Um, 12 bucks, 15 bucks. Let's kind of move forward into February. I don't see any sales here that are making me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nine, less than 9.50, less than $12. I, you know, you weren't making more than a couple bucks on this book at that point. So what was the point? Now, again, when you're talking about these modern books, I do kind of suspect some of the books that were on the market are probably in like CGC or CBCS's hands right now getting graded. That's very possible. Uh, so it's something we're definitely going to want to track down the road. Once again, we're seeing three months later, uh, the books that I picked, it's holding pretty steady. I, I mean, there's one or two books on this list that I'm, I'm a little surprised up front that they um, aren't worth less, basically, but they still aren't worth a lot more than you would have paid for it at the time I made the video. It's kind of promising to see these results. It's it feels pretty satisfying. Um, I do know that this is a video when I when I made the original video, a couple of these books got called out several times as like no 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 those are great investments and and I think long term there's a really good chance that that's still true. I don't want to I don't want to discount those comments. I'm just once again I think I'm proving here that you should not buy books that are on the hot list unless there's something really specific like you know that there's going to be points along the line where that book is going to spike again. What does that mean? It means like another trailer is going to come out. You know, that show is going to release. That movie is going to launch at a certain window where people are talking about it, but the, the book still has room to grow. A lot of times I look at these lists and there's books on there that I would not put on this on these this series of videos. I just wouldn't do it because I think they're actually good investments. But even those books, I probably wouldn't buy them that week or at that time. I'd wait a little bit for some of the heat to, to continue because what happens the next week, four weeks later, you know, there's been new lists. The market focuses on these books. And when the market focuses on those books, it, it can't keep focusing on all of the other older books that were hot. That's the secret. And that's what you need to keep in mind. Okay, if you've made it this far into the video, I just want to thank you for supporting uh, for supporting me by watching the entire video. I really appreciate that. There are some links in the description below for other ways you can support me or support my partners. Um, you know, by buying things like like comic supplies through Gemini Comic Supply, um, heading over to Dangerous Waters Comics and more, or getting your comics clean and pressed over at Turlock Comics. All kinds of cool ways you can support the channel. And I did add monthly giveaways to my perks for being a $10 a month member on my YouTube channel. Or if you want to go support me on Ko-fi, that's another way you can do it. Plus, you get access to a really cool special Discord channel that I have. But if you want to join my public Discord server, you can do that too. And the link's in the description below. You can also follow me on Whatnot. I have sales every week, so definitely come hang out in those. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, I want to remind you, as always, hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.